Whoever thought dinner could be so deadly? But it can be. It certainly was for John the Baptist. However, he wasn't the victim of some fast-spreading virus or deadly bacteria. But it was at a party that John the Baptist parted ways with his head. Matthew tells us in the verses prior to our gospel reading for today that John the Baptist had been imprisoned and he was arrested for speaking against the ruler Herod and Herod's relationship with his former sister-in-law. Her name was Herodias, just to keep it confusing. So one day, Herod throws a dinner party, as the wealthy and powerful are prone to do. However, I imagine he didn't think John the Baptist's head on a platter would be on the menu, but that's what he got. You see, Herod was so impressed by Herodias's daughter's dancing that he made a promise to the girl to give her whatever she wanted. And with her mother's prompting, she didn't ask for anything that another young female might want. Instead, she went with John the Baptist's head on a platter. A fatal feast, to be sure. This part of the story never struck me like it does these days. Well, I guess, of course I'd picked up on the politics at play in the story, the abuse of power. But now, in the midst of this pandemic, when the peril of gathering together, eating and laughing and dancing and singing should be evident, for months we've been seeing people ignoring, denying, defying warnings, ignorant, or just dismissing the risk. And now we see the resulting rising pandemic death tolls. Today, dinner can all too easily come with a side of disease and death as a much unwanted dessert. Like Herod, it seems our country, for the sake of the economy, is willing to sacrifice life and well, to be frank, most often the lives of others, of the workers. The question we need to keep asking is, does it have to be this way? Just because it is what it is, does what is have to be? Isn't there another way? Perhaps that's what Jesus was wondering, hoping, praying, considering after he heard about John's execution. As Matthew tells us, Jesus withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Perhaps that is what drove him to seek solace in solitude, a space to mourn John, to pray, recenter, find comfort, reconnect with God, to vision God's new way. Perhaps it was in those moments of quiet alone, or maybe it was when he saw the people, because when the people heard it, as Matthew writes now, the it could be John's death, or just that Jesus was nearby, either way, the people saw it him out. Perhaps it was to offer him support or to rally around him for hope. They too were looking for a new way, a way of life and not death. Matthew doesn't say. So maybe it was in the quiet. Maybe it was when he saw the people gathering together, gathering around for him. He didn't run from them, but to them, and had compassion. He healed them. And to show us that God's way is not Herod's, not that of palace, 
parties and required sacrificial death, Jesus fed them. Such a feast so completely opposite, a juxtaposition of what happened a few verses prior. This is not an orgy of food for the rich and powerful, a presentation of prestige, a dinner of deals and death. This was the hungry being fed and satisfied. This is again the vision of our God's truly radical way. So, no, I am pretty sure you and I may miss eating out, but we wait for the true feast, like the way God fed the people, the runaway slaves in Exodus. Food not just for some, but just enough for all, enough meat to meet their needs. No one could claim or collect more, you know, for just in case, or thinking, well, they deserve more. Enough for all, not too much for some, and scarcity for others. That's the meal I yearn for, I hope you long for. I know we miss going out to restaurants, we miss gathering together for food and fellowship and laughter and singing. And we can wait and we can work for and we can hope and pray for that true feast, a true feast of life where all taste the sweet goodness and abundance of creation. When all our hunger, all of our hungers, for justice, for meaning, for peace, for acceptance, all of those hungers and more are satiated. Not with the empty calories of bread and circuses, of distractions and entertainments, but with the food of life that is truly fulfilling. As author Richard Beck notes, hospitality is politically subversive. Now, I'll probably have to wait longer than the pandemic for this, but at least in some whatever small way now, in whatever ways we can, now and when this pandemic is passed, when we gather together, together again, we, like those thousands gathered with Jesus, we can get a taste, enough to whet our appetite, enough to fuel our action, our words, our hearts and souls, fuel our faith in the God who offers us, the God who serves, the feast for all, the feast for all times. Amen.